This is your Barbados Today Morning News Update for Friday, July 12, 2019. Thanks for joining us. I'm Carol Williams. It was a show of solidarity. Scores of people walking through the pine as they remembered 17-year-old Kyrie Boyce, who died after falling into a 100-foot well in the area on July 4th. A number of officials also attended last night's vigil. Among them, MP for the area, Santia Bradshaw, her colleague Sandra Husbands, and community activist Rodney Grant. During the vigil, one of Kyrick's four siblings read a poem. His grandmother reminisced about the good times they had, and a woman who also lost a child nine years ago pledged to support his mom. It hurt like hell, I can tell you that. So Ty is pray for strength because that is what you are going to need. You will only know how strong you are by traveling through this journey. You was there for me, and for sure I will be there for you. Many days you call me, many days you message me, many days you come and show me, keep my company. I know to read from before the even burn cause primary to secondary role together. So I feel your pain tonight, Toya. This is just a reoccurrence of tiny tank for me. It's just somebody else in the chair and it hurts like hell for me. MP Bradshaw, a family friend, also continued to offer her support. I may not be able to say with the, the things that many of you may have said because of the position that I hold, but believe me, if I can say them, I will say them with the same anger and the same bitterness that many of you feel. But this is not a time for that because time for that for me has gone. And now it is about the healing, it is about the pulling together, it is about making sure that nothing like this ever happens again. But it is to remind us about the importance of the name of family, of keeping families and communities together and being able to look out for each other. Meantime, former MP for the constituency, Hamilton Lashley, is defending his stewardship in the wake of accusations over the state of wells in the government housing units. Lashley, who served the constituency for more than a dozen years under different administrations and as an independent, says he did all he could to ensure the wells were maintained. Along this time, every year what we used to do also was that committee that we had in place would check all of the wells through Ms. Marina Ball, who was my constituency assistant at the time, making sure that the wells, the wells are clear, they are properly covered, and etc. So I really had no real problems. So and when there was a problem as it relates to the wells, we refer the matter to the National Housing Corporation. But National Housing Corporation always take a kind of lethargic approach in these cases. So most of the time, we would call on the resources of the residents to assist in making sure that the community uh, is safe and also, as I said, aesthetically pleasing to the end. On to other news, the National Union of Public Workers, NAPW, has parted ways with General Secretary Roslyn Smith. The union announced late yesterday that its national council opted not to renew her contract after careful consideration. Smith, who served the union 47 years, has been receiving medical treatment since last December for an undisclosed illness. The union said while her retirement would have commenced on October 1st last year, its National Council decided to extend her employment to March 31st, 2019. In recent times, relations between Smith and some members of the NAPW leadership, including President Akani McDowell, have soured. Several months ago, news emerged of a brewing of a brewing legal battle between Smith and McDowell over statements he'd made about her. Come October, two Barbadians and a Trinidadian will be honored at Cave Hill's graduation ceremony. Calypsonian Stetson Red Plastic Bag Wiltshire will be conferred a Doctor of Letters for his contribution to entertainment, while internet pioneer Alan Emtage will receive a Doctor of Science for his commitment to scientific invention. Trinidadian Maxine Williams will be conferred a Doctor of Law for Leadership. RPB, as is popularly known, has been in the entertainment business for almost four decades, amassing over 400 songs with 25 albums recorded. He has won numerous titles and was conferred a Barbados Service Star in 1995 and a Barbados Jubilee Honor in 2016. Emtage conceived of and implemented Archie, 
the world's first pre-web internet search engine, providing the foundation on which public search engines now operate. In 2017, he became the only Caribbean person and person of African descent to be inducted into the Internet Hall of Fame. There's regional and international news after this short break. In the region, the Royal St. Lucia Police Force is investigating the conduct of one of its own for the second time in as many weeks. The probe was launched following circulation of a video in which the policeman is seen using a cutlass to hit a handcuffed suspect. We get the details from HTS News Force. Human rights advocate and attorney at law Mary Francis has thrown the weight of her office behind the chorus of calls condemning the action on the part of a policeman which was captured on tape on Wednesday. In a short video reported on by HDS News Force on Wednesday, the handcuffed man is kneeling on the ground when he is lashed three times with the broadside of a cutlass by the police. News Force has since learnt that the man who's seen kneeling and subdued is mentally challenged. For the second time in as many weeks, the police are launching an investigation into one of their own for questionable conduct. And as we became aware of the video, <coughs> Commissioner of Police um, had some discussions with his executive and a decision was taken to immediately assign somebody to, to investigate the matter. So the assigning did not happen today, but almost immediately as soon as we became aware of it. So we cannot suspend right now. So for now, we're asking him to go and leave pending the outcome of the matter. And then um, further action will be taken based on, on the outcome. And finally, the French Energy and Environment Minister is in hot water and under the harsh media spotlight after it was revealed he spent taxpayer money on lavish dinners and furnishings. We get the details from France 24. Leaving with his job intact, Prime Minister Edouard Philippe summoned France's Environment Minister to discuss a deepening expenses scandal. Lavish dinners at the taxpayers' cost and a 63,000 euro renovation of his ministerial apartment. Philippe says de Rouge's expenses will now be examined under a magnifying glass. If the slightest ambiguity remains, even after the investigations, Francois de Rougy is committed to pay back every euro. After French investigative website Mediapart published the allegations one by one, de Rougy admitted that the situation looked bad. I understand that the public could be a little shocked by some of these photos. I must add, though, that these images were stolen photos. I don't know how Mediapart got hold of them, but well, that's life. But de Rougy insists that he's done nothing wrong, saying that the dinners at the National Assembly were linked to his job at the time as Speaker of Parliament and that the renovations were legal. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates or like us on Facebook. And sign up for breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as Quinplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. I'm Carol Williams. Have a good day.